All right, today we are going to talk about communication because you know what? Anyone who has watched Dr. Phil knows for a fact that communication is key in a relationship. By the way, that's my Dr. Phil impersonation. I've been working on that for the past 10 minutes and uh, that's the best I got. So you're gonna be working on that. You can give me some feedback in the communication in the comments as to how bad that impersonation is. Anyways, we know communication is really important, but how do we actually do that? That's what it is we're gonna be talking about. So let's just jump right into it. So when we think about communication, first off, you need to understand, well, what does it really mean and why is it important? So communication is essentially when two people are exchanging ideas between one another, and that could be our feelings, our wants, our needs, as well as receiving that information from another person. Why is that important when we're in a relationship? Well, when you're in a relationship with another person, suddenly you go from a me to a we to a couple where you have to kind of work together and combine your lives and your own motives and your own desires. Suddenly now, if you're not on the same page and at least talking about the most important parts of the relationship, suddenly these things are going to get buried under that rug. And oh my God, do we trip over that rug if we just keep burying our issues, our concerns and everything like that. So without open dialogue and open communication, a relationship falls apart pretty quickly. And you end up having ridiculous blow up fights, like blow up fights over, I don't know, the cabinet doors being left open, which by the way, I admit I do that all the time. So sorry, Jessica, but over small things. And if you have that blow up fight, it's not about the cabinet doors. It's about all of those things that you've stuffed under that rug over and over and over again, and you haven't actually talked about. So communication is just essentially you both getting on the same page and opening up about the things that are really important to you. So how do we do it? Well, number one is rather than trying to always do all of the talking, which I am very guilty of when it comes to communication and trying to express my needs, instead, going into any type of conversation where you're talking about something important with an open mind and trying to understand what it is that they need or their wants and their desires. If we can stop trying to project everything that we want and go into the conversation with a solution in mind, and this is where we need to go and this is what it is that we need to do and rather just try to listen to someone and understand maybe why it is that they tend to keep the cabinet doors open or why it is that they tend to blow up at night or why it is that they've been a little bit passive aggressive recently. Whatever is on your mind, just try to understand. And when I say understand, I don't mean just like, try to understand to be there and be like, yes, yep, give me more, give me more. Have you ever done that? Where you're like, yep, you can tell me more. And you're just like waiting to unleash all of your fury onto that person once they tell you what's on their mind. You already have the response. No, no, no. I mean actually sitting back and listening and really trying to keep that open mind as to what is going on in their lives. And when you do that, suddenly now you can kind of get on the same page and build what we call relationship synergy. We have this program, it's uh, created by Dr. Gary Lewandowski. He's an instructor here at Love Strategies. He's amazing. And this is a lot of what it is that we talk about in this program. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Now, the second thing to do when it comes to open communication is using what we call the sandwich approach to communication. This is a pretty well-known thing in the corporate world, in the business world, but it's not as much discussed when it comes to romantic relationships. I think it applies really, really well. So the way the sandwich approach works is simply you start out with some positive reinforcement, then you throw on that salami, you throw in that ham, whatever it is, that middle stuff, that feedback that you wanna give, something that you wanna change. So you start with the positive, you throw in some uh, feedback here, and then you end with a positive, and that's it. And if it's something basic, such as, let's just go back to the cabinet door uh, discussion or issue, you could just simply say, look, I really appreciate, Adam, how much you have been doing the dishes. Like seriously, it really helps me out a lot. See that bread right there, just laying that bread down? Man, the dishes have been so great, you haven't been leaving anything out there. But I just wanna talk about the cabinet doors. And the thing is, isn't it so silly how something just like this can blow up? Here's the thing, when you do that, it really makes me feel a little bit anxious. And I would just appreciate if you could just take that extra second to just kind of just shut those doors whenever it is that you open the cabinet doors. And also, I just wanna say before we end this, I really do appreciate how you've been filling up the gas in the car every time you use it. Bam, sandwich approach. We got the bread, we got the salami. 
that nasty salami, but it's gotta be eaten, it's delicious, and then we got that bread on the other hand. That is the sandwich approach to communication. When you put those things together, um, delicious bite of communication. The third thing that you can do when it comes to communication, I'm having some fun with this video, uh, is using, uh, this is really the foundation of any healthy relationship and that I believe, and that is being sincerely candid with one another. And that means having a healthy foundation of absolute truth in the relationship, no matter how much it may hurt the other person's initial feelings or maybe just hurt them at all. But living with an idea that you will never lie even if it's a white lie, even if it's that lie when someone says, hey, how do I look in this? And you don't feel that they look very good or it's not quite their best look. Being extremely open in your relationship, and I call it sincerely candid because I want you to be sincere. I don't want you to be unnecessarily mean, but I also want you to live by a core, I'm not a very fundamental person, but this is an important principle in a relationship, any relationship, and in life, by the way, is to 100% be completely honest with people. And the thing is, once you live by this principle and you never break it, then suddenly your relationship becomes so rock solid with its communication because no matter what, even if you're communicating something or telling someone, they always know it's the truth, no matter what, and you never get caught in a lie, there's never a lie to be had, and it really also forces you to live a more high value life, right? If you know for a fact you will never lie to your partner, suddenly communication is so much easier because there's never a concern that you're gonna say something or slip up or do anything that is gonna cause them to be upset or concerned or you're gonna have these lies that don't make sense. So living by a lifestyle of being sincerely candid, not only in your romantic relationship, but frankly with everyone, is just a better way to live. Fourth thing to think about with communication is that 93% of communication is nonverbal. Okay, so what, what does that mean? Well, there, when it comes to communication, there are the words that we're speaking, but then there is our body language that backs it up. So let's say I go up to you and I say, Adam, I love you very, very much, okay? That's very different than saying, Adam, I love you very much, and I just wanna tell you how great you are, right? Like, there's such a difference between a smile, and that's not the best example, but there's many examples such as, yeah, what's going on? How's your day going? Or, what's going on? How's your day going? Notice how even my tonality and the way that I'm expressing myself is completely different. And this is also true when we're trying to read the room or when we're in a conversation with a person. And when we're trying to communicate something, especially something that might be a little bit deeper rooted or you've noticed that your partner has just been really off that week or really maybe passive aggressive or just has been a little bit grumpy, it's important to not only read their body language and try to catch them at the right emotional time as well as bringing your best body language to the conversation. So there's a real difference between coming at someone and kind of attacking them and bringing this, them this feedback that they need to hear versus sitting next to them and softly putting your hand on their leg and looking in the eyes and just say, is everything okay? I'm here for you. I've noticed that you've been a little bit off lately and I just wanna tell you I'm here for you if you need to talk. Notice my voice tonality, the way that I'm expressing myself, showing that I really care, making that eye contact, all of that is going to allow me to have such a better connection with that person and communication. We're gonna get on the same wavelength versus me going up to someone and saying, you know what? You have sucked lately. You've been the worst person to be around ever because you've been such a grump. Notice the difference between the two of those things, okay? Kind of saying the same thing, just doing it in a different way. So. Not only read their body language, but be very intentional about the body language that you bring to that particular conversation. And then the final piece, which is something that I don't hear anyone talk about when it comes to communication and relationships, and I want to bring this to all of your attention, and that is the opposite of communicating. What most people say when it comes to communicating, most people say, Always communicate, always share your needs, always over communicate as much as you can. But the counterpoint to that is actually no. Don't over communicate. You can over communicate in relationships and I've seen it break relationships when someone, and you're speaking to the ultimate over communicator here, by the way, by nature I just always wanna give feedback, I wanna communicate, I wanna improve things. 
But there are times when we just simply need to bite our tongue and choose our battles, right? Because if every single week, or worse, every single day, we have something we're trying to nag someone about or trying to change about them or trying to optimize or trying to give them that feedback or trying to criticize or having trying to have a big talk every single week. Oh my God, does that drive a person to an insane asylum? You can't live like that and you can't have a relationship that thrives that way. So when it comes to your communication style, don't recommend over communicating. I recommend being intentional about really thinking about the things that matter most. And if you're not sure of what is most important in your relationship or you're overwhelmed by challenges, well, I recommend finding help, whether it's a community like our program or whether it's a therapist or maybe it's a friend, someone you can talk to and really just hash out some of these major challenges in the relationship and prioritize them. Because you can't attack them all at once. And if you find that the challenges are so overwhelming in a relationship that you just can't even seem to get ahead, and every single time the relationship starts to do well, it just falls flat on its face, you can't seem to get on the same page, well, I hate to tell you, but if you've been trying and trying and trying and using these techniques and it hasn't been working, perhaps this is not the right person for you. I can't communicate with a wall very well doesn't really listen to me too well, okay? And if you are in a relationship with a wall who just doesn't react and is not aware of your needs or your wants, then it's time to move away from that wall and find a nice, kind man who actually cares about you and your needs. So with that said, I'd love to hear from you. This is just kind of an impromptu video I created, so I'd love to hear, and do you guys enjoy this style? Let me know in the comments, as well as let me know what are your challenges when it comes to communication in a relationship. And finally, I'm gonna leave a link to Gary's program on, we have a free training, it's called Relationship Synergy, it's awesome. You can also check it out at lovestrategies.com. It's just a plug to just watch his free training. It's 100% free, and you can learn the seven steps to building what we call Relationship Synergy. So get in there, go watch that video, enjoy it, and. I will speak to you very soon. I hope that this helps you in your relationship wherever you are. And uh, yeah, speak to you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.